there's no one left. A knowledge of the sociology, history or customs of the Inangai people is all but non-existent. The traditional people from here were the Inangai and I was told by my grandmother that there was 35 left. They were told to go to the train station to collect rations and blankets and all that sort of stuff and they were just sh shepherded onto the cattle trucks, cattle trains and taken away to wherever. Probably a lot of them went to Warrabin, to Sherberg, further up north, who knows where they ended up. But so far we can't find any. Scattered galleries and borer rings on the sandstone jump ups, occasional native wells, fragile and delicate tracings fainter than shadows. In not much more than a hundred years, shadows are all that's left of a group of people who lived, loved, fought, played across this familiar place just as we do today. The old people that are buried in here, um, they were found, it goes back to early 1900s and um, like in, in there at the moment we have five, five people at rest. Um, four come from the Queensland Museum another, and then another one comes from the Australian National Museum or National Museum of Australia. The majority have been found around this Long Reach country. Found on Thompson River is probably about the only things uh, that, that we can identify. So we thought well to bring these old people back to country um, Longreach is the best place to build it and um, you know, bring it back to, well, everybody's sacred ground because black and white fellas are buried here. And um, so, yeah, we decided um, to approach the Longreach Council and, and see if we could build it here. Really started at, at DCQ's inception five years ago. We were obviously trying to build links and contacts with our Indigenous community, it was part of our brief. and. And through that process, I was able to contact Dave, Dave Thompson's dad, Dave Senior, and he sort of mentioned to me that they'd been in this process of trying to come up with this idea of a keeping place to, to restore um, and get Inangai remains back on country. And, and that's sort of how it happened. And we started, my view of the world at the time was, well, what, what does DCQ need to do to help this sort of thing pro progress? And lo and behold, we started, you know, to get a few things happening. And then, of course, Dave Thompson Senior passed on. And then the next minute, this young handsome fellow named Dave Thompson Jr. turned up on the scene and, and he took the baton and, and we've sort of carried it on from there. So it's been a five year journey. Uh, you know, these sort of things never, never happen quickly, but from DCQ's perspective, I think from the Desert Channel's board, they've, they've been unwaving in their support for the project all the way through, which is a credit to them. I mean, a five year time frame to support something's pretty amazing. And of course, the DCQ team itself, virtually the whole team at some point has had a hand in getting this building here. There's a couple of skulls there, uh, craniums in, in, um, in particular that have uh, bullet holes found in them. just like Whitefella Funeral, uh, down the main street, um, escorted by the police. Could feel the old people though. Yeah. So we started that fire there, and then I, I got a dish. And then we sat it and walked in and we, we smoked. We smoked out the place to get rid of the old people. And I came out and, and then uh, locked that door. And that was it, it was, this huge flush just came through me and I just started sobbing. I'd, and I was happy that yeah, we brought these old people home. galleries and borer rings on the sandstone jump ups, occasional native wells, fragile and delicate tracings fainter than shadows. On Saturday, September the 15th, the last physical fragments of six of these people 
were brought home and laid to rest. It's been a long journey.